Hey everybody, this is Perch, and it's uh, probably not a surprise to you, but uh, if you've been listening to this channel, but yes, IDW has lost the G.I. Joe and Transformers license, um, and it will expire at the end of 2022. I think November is why it, it, people are saying the end, but I, there may be a little cliff there. I, who knows? Also keep in mind that when companies lose a license, their motivation to uh, to keep putting out product for that license starts to, to shift. They know that there's not a long-term tail of revenue. Now, there's going to be some pieces in this where, you know, if IDAW puts something out in December, then they want to reprint or do a trade, I'm sure they will be able to, you know, have that done. It's not like all their products become a cliff at the end of the year. Or maybe. I, I have not seen the contract, but generally speaking, you lose the ability to create new works. And that's, that's kind of how it goes. You can keep reprinting things and, and milking some money for a period of time. We'll see. Um, but at any rate, there's a bunch of little, first of all, there's a bunch of just clarifying items here. This is being reported as IDW has lost the Hasbro franchise. They have not fully lost the Has Hasbro franchise. They have lost Magic the Gathering. It happened some time ago. G.I. Joe and Transformers. Um, I, I don't know. I, I reported on this channel quite some time ago. I, I want to feel like, I want to say it was like six months ago, um, that this was happening. And, um, and I remember some people arguing with me. And then uh, it went quiet. And so when this news came out here, um, it was like, I, I, was, I thought we already knew this. But it, but apparently, this is the the full confirmation. And the uh, San Diego-based uh, publisher, IDW, they actually formally announced, yes, it's going away. So um, this uh, what's what's also happening. Uh, oh, but, but sorry, to, to complete the thought. So there's a couple um, uh, products that are still sticking with uh, IDW, and that's My Little Pony, uh, Dungeons and Dragons. Um, but what's unclear here, and I think the way you should read this is Hasbro is pulling away from IDW. Their properties are not all in the exact same timeline. And if I look back, as I recall, and this is going off memory, um, G.I. Joe and uh, Transformers, they were actually, um, they came in first. And I believe My Little Pony came in after that. So th this could just very well be a timeline thing. It's not like Hasbro is is keeping all this. It's just, you know, they, they're slowly, they're, they're coming to the end of their term and things are moving away. Um, so it's, the, the key, the, the other key here um, is that where are they going? So there hasn't been an announced new partner yet, but the fact that we are officially pulling the plug most likely means that an announcement of a new uh, a new licensor is coming imminently, like within, I would say, a week. Because generally speaking, you would hold this news for a while. There'd be no reason to come out with this, this statement from IDW unless you knew that somebody else was about to make an announcement saying that, uh, you know, we've got it particularly because IDW will keep putting out G.I. Joe and Transformers uh, stories for the remainder of the year. So that's, you know, that that you can kind of, um, you could just kind of um, feel your way around that, I guess, is, is the best way to put it. Um, now, what's IDW going to do? Well, they, you know, they're, they're, they're being very uh, proud about uh, Rocketeer. You're seeing some things about that. And um, so, you know, there's, there's, they, they'll have products to serve. But G.I. Joe and Transformers um, going away is, is a pretty major blow. And it's also a property that if you do it right, if you give it to someone um, with the right hands, with a desire to grow the franchise, it can do quite well. Both properties are evergreen in the sense that, you know, they still sell toys. There's still a, a decent amount of interest. There's a lot of variability that you can do with these, these products. You can, you know, you've got a lot of different directions you can go. So if you put a, a really high-end uh, artist, you put a writer on that's a good writer, but also writing for the long term, you can wind up having a really nice franchise on your hands. The way IDW has looked at these licensed properties has always felt, at least to me, like it was a lot of very short term thinking. They would do things for four issues, six issues, and you kind of have this cloud hanging over it of, will IDW run out of money? And so, you know, maybe they're not thinking for the long term, but something like Transformers and G.I. Joe, if you think about those runs back when they were with Marvel Comics many, many years ago, we have 100 plus issues of, you know, deep storytelling they can do with these characters. And granted, it was written for a younger audience, but it still felt like you were signing on for something long term. And if you can give that feel again, it will do great. So I, I'm hoping wherever it goes, it, uh, it does go to a place with, people who care about long-term storytelling, 
you know, really have, uh, you're going to hear a lot about respect for the characters. Yeah, you have to have respect for the characters. You can't twist them and warp them around like we have seen attempts to do in, in the recent past. But more than that, you, you need to have respect for the fact that, yeah, these properties can make money, can get a lot of attention, can generate a lot of, you know, of good material. And so treat them with respect, treat them with uh, the sense that I'm not writing for a short term pop. I'm, I'm writing for something that's going to continue to make me and the company money two years from now, five years from now, right with that thinking and and put top tier art talent on it. Uh, absolutely. Somebody who knows. I mean, look, I, I, I've joked about it before to him. Can you imagine Sean Murphy drawing Transformers like he loves to do cars? I'd love to see that uh, put put him on that. But, but anyway, there's a lot of different different things you can do. So the odds-on favorite right now, if you're keeping track, is that Robert Kirkman Skybound will take these properties. Uh, Kirkman had expressed interest. There's a lot of uh, rumors going on that he has it. Chances are, I, I mean, you know, nothing is for sure, but it feels uh, very, very, very likely that he will have it. I know... Um, I know that there was other suitors that were interested in getting involved, and I know that people were poking at it trying to find what to do, but I also know there was a lot of interest from the Hasbro side of going with Kirkman, and, and for one solid reason. Kirkman, in addition to doing comics through Skybound, can also promise a bridge into doing you know shows and media and things beyond comics due to his relationships he's managed to set up with the company. So if you're Hasbro, you look at this and go, yeah, I could sell off to a licensor who maybe has a deep respect for, uh, you know, for these characters and, uh, you know, they, they love them to death, you know, or I can go with this, uh, the guy who uh, made made tons and tons and tons of money off The Walking Dead and has this invincible deal with uh, Amazon Prime and potentially can take these comics and not just make comics and actually get us uh, get these these properties, you know, spun up again if, if they do a good job. You know, we can get cartoons, we can get movies, there's there's a lot, you know, we can breathe some new life into these franchises. Uh, G.I. Joe and Transformers, still extremely valuable properties for, for Hasbro. We have seen recent movies, but I think both have, I don't say cooled, I think, so here's where, from my personal opinion, I think if you're talking about sheer kind of IP, you know, what's worth more. Transformers as is arguably definitely, you know, they've done better at the box office. Uh, Bumblebee did well. There's um, there's certainly this idea that they can continue to put out those movies and and it's it's valuable for them. Uh, GI Joe is one of those ones that uh, historically has made tons of money, but the the movies didn't exactly click. You know, we had the Snake Eyes movie that was kind of you know it, it was again coming out during COVID ish, so it 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 still it was a not a tepid. It was better than that, but it wasn't it wasn't a blockbuster. And I think from Hasbro's perspective, both of these properties should be cranking out blockbusters, and they should. They're they're strong, good properties in the right hands. So you know, I, I've heard some names thrown around um, from a you know close friend source, uh, confidentially. One artist uh, get uh, get named for you know, one of these properties if it does go to Skybound. And I know again, there's been some interest, and I think there's been some uh, comp sheets that have been drawn up. Some you know imagining if you give me this franchise, then. You know, this is kind of what I would do with it. Some some illustrations that have been put together that are apparently pretty nice from some big name artists. I, I know the artist that I heard is, a, you know, one of the biggest names over at Marvel right now. So, you know, maybe, 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 maybe not. We'll see. Uh, but ultimately, what does this also do for IDW? Well, I mean, the, the short answer is it's not good. Now, IDW hadn't been treating these properties like they were blockbuster franchise properties for them. And, and as a result, they never made a ton of money. So it's a loss, but I would argue it's more of a loss of opportunity than a loss of immediate revenue. It's not good that they're going away, but the really bad part is not that they're suddenly losing out on, on millions and millions of dollars they're collecting because they weren't, but they are losing out on the ability to turn it into millions of dollars. And so the head scratching part of all this is why didn't IDW treat these properties better? Why didn't they find a way to position themselves as uh, you know, as, as major you know, as a major licensor uh, and and be able to corner the market. I think the opportunity was there. I think certainly over the last five, 10 years, there were plenty of, of moments where Transformers was doing incredibly well in the box office. Lots of stuff you could piggyback off of. And it just, it felt like there was a, a decline in the comics that just never quite got there. And, uh, and, and, you know, a lot of very strange choices, both in editorial and some of the writers that they put on the books were just 
felt like odd choices and the writers wanted to take the franchises in a, in a very personal, just radically different direction from the core part of the franchise. And it, it didn't click. Um, you know, when you're, when you're dealing with a licensed property and I have said this to creators before and they hate it when I say this, it, you have to respect the core audience of that franchise. It isn't yours even more so than say a Spider-Man Batman character like that. When you're licensing a property from another company and these properties in particular, you had decades of established fan base and everything else. If you're going to go in a radically new direction with it, your odds of failure are really high. And I think that lesson keeps being learned over and over and over. And I think it definitely applied to these two. So hopefully better days are ahead for the, uh, for GI Joe and Transformers. Uh, definitely this is, I, I mean, IDW has to figure it out at this point. Uh, they are, this is it, not to be negative. It's not circling the drain, but it's, it's, it's close to it. They're, they're in the sink. I guess that's the way to put it. Like you need to start swimming and get out of the, you know, you're, you're, this is not going well for you. You've got to figure this out and, uh, and certainly don't accelerate your demise by turning into one of those companies that goes on the offensive uh, against the reader, the readership by, you know, demanding that they respect you. I mean, just put out the books, they'll respect you. Anyway, uh, let me know what you think in the comments below. Like and subscribe, of course, and thanks for listening.